Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Trains pulling in for Subway Series Phase 2, Take 2, this time at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. The first time these two teams met, the Mets won two out of three. The Yankees are hoping to turn things around this, this weekend, weekend in the Bronx. Huge crowds are expected at the big ballpark in the Bronx. And tonight, the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Mets against the New York Yankees in the first game of a three-game set from Yankee Stadium stadium in the Bronx. Well, if you're going to the Subway Series, what better way to come here than with the Subway? Yankees and the Mets will start in moments here at the stadium, and the Mets come in with a three-game losing streak. They just got slapped around by the Red Sox, and that's nothing new. The American League has dominated the National League and Interleague play this season. 131 wins to 79 losses, and every single one of those categories, the American League excels. Here back with Al Leiter, I'm Michael Kay, and you wonder, with the Mets' three-game losing streak to the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park, were the Mets somewhat exposed? I think a little bit of that, but also, let's face it, the Red Sox are hot. They've uh, won 10 in a row. The Blue, uh, the, the Blue Jays beat the Mets, and they weren't really uh, p playing at their best, so I think it could be a combination of both. Now, in terms of exposure, what's the thing that you saw from the Mets in Boston? You said, well, that's something they have to improve. Well, you know, they had their two best, and Pedro, who wasn't Pedro, I don't know whether it was the emotions of going back to Fenway, and certainly Tom Glavin pitched well enough uh, yesterday. He didn't go deep into the game, but Having Carlos Delgado injured wasn't a good situation for them, so I think they have probably the most glaring issue for them will be that number three starter. Well, that number three starter could be El Duque, could be Traxel, could be Soler, and the Yankees will see all of them this weekend. Lineups, first pitch coming up next right here on Yes. From Babe Ruth Plaza right inside the house that Babe Ruth built, you see Mike Messina up on the board. He's taking his warm-ups right now, and we'll take a look at the Mets starting lineup that he's going to face. And the Mets starting lineup is presented, as always, by our good friends at Rico. Jose Reyes will lead off for the Mets. He's their shortstop. Paul Aduca will DH today. He's going to bat second. Batting third and playing center field, Carlos Beltran in his second year of work with the Mets. David Wright, the third baseman, did not have a good series in Boston, but none of the Mets did. He's going to clean up, and he has great numbers against the Yankees lifetime. Cliff Floyd in left field, back off the DL. They sent down Lastings Millage. He'll bat fifth. Batting sixth and playing second base, Jose Valentin. The ageless one, Julio Franco at first base will bat seventh. Batting eighth and playing right field, Andy Chavez and Ramon Castro. Castro will catch. He'll bat ninth. And Mike Messina on the mound. He's having a heck of a year. He's really been very consistent. Probably the most consistent starter for the Yankees. You see 17 starts, 9-3 record with a nice 3-2-8 ERA. Few hits per innings, less than innings. 10 times 15. When he gets his double digits, it'll be the most in the American League. He shares that right now with our fellow broadcaster, Jim Cott. 20 question mark. He's had a few great years, 18 and 5, 19 and 9, 18 and 7. Could this be the year? And head games, well, he's going to change a lot of speed, and uh, his speeds are going to be anywhere 88 to 90 miles an hour and a 67 to 68 miles an hour. And that's your Land Rover pitcher scatter report. Well, we're ready for baseball here in the Bronx. And finally, a nice day without much of a threat of rain, which is great. Full house here at the stadium, all three games are going to be sold out, as every interleague game seems to be, between the Yankees and the Mets. And Jose Reyes digs in. Mike Messina is ready. And the veteran right-hander deals to the Mets shortstop. Swings at the first pitch and skies it to left center. Johnny Damon's there. One pitch, one out. Let's take a look at the entire Yankee defense behind Mike Messina. You know that Damon is in center, sandwiched around him. Cabrera, Melky Cabrera's in left. Bernie Williams over and right in the infield. A-Rod, Jeter, Cairo, Phillips as third to first. Posada behind the plate. And Mike Messina is on the mound.
Now here's Paul LaDuca. One of the pickups the Mets made during the offseason after Mike Piazza left as a free agent. Mets really didn't have much of an interest in bringing him back. LaDuca is having a nice season. And the pitch by Messina is outside 1 0. Yankees baseball is presented in high definition. We're available. It's brought to you by Sony Bravia. LaDuca, seven for his last 18, nine for his last 27. And he's getting half a day off because he is the DH. You see that Larry Poncino just made the call of a strike. The rest of the crew, Jerry Davis is at first, the veteran crew chief, Tim McClellan, at second, and Ed Hickox is over at third. They'll be here all weekend. So will the Yankees and the Mets. The 1-1. Scooped up by Posada, the count 2-1. And, and Yankees baseball is broadcast in Spanish. It's available by hitting the SAP button on your television. SAP is brought to you by Toyota. A smart way to keep moving forward. And the count now 3-1 and one to Laduca. Mets a good road team. They're 25 and 16. And only the Tigers have won more road games with 26. Foul back. Mets come into this game at 47 and 31, and Willie Randolph has led them to the best record in the National League. Talking to Willie before the game, I said, uh, How'd that Boston team impress you? And man, I know they're hot, but. Other than being hot, they're a good ball club. And one of the things that's happening here in interleague play is the best of the best, the best of the American League are crushing the best of the National League, except really the Yankees. They're only one game over 500 against them. High fly ball center field. Damon there, and Damon puts it away. Two down. And that's strange, Jim, because the Yankees have always played well interleague play. 101 and 70 is their record, and only. The Oakland Athletics at 103 and 70 have a better record. Well, Boston has built their lead with interleague play. They're 14 and 1. The three teams in the Central, the three top teams, are 13 and 2. And I mean, even against the Cardinals, who you'd say the Cardinals and the best, and the Mets are certainly the class of the of the National League. Here's Carlos Beltran, and uh, there's a strike. Beltron having a much better second season with the Mets. Struggled in his first year after signing that big money free agent contract. Seems more comfortable. Took him a while to get acclimated to the city. And another strike on a breaking ball to count on two. That last pitch, and Mike Messina calls that dumping his change up for his break. He comes right over the top, and it's almost like he's pulling down on a window shade, and it just floats in there, low 70s, high 60s, mile per hour. The 0 2 missed outside, and the count 1 and 2. Round it sharply to second and under the glove of Cairo trickles into right field. We'll see how they score it. It should be an E4 because Cairo would tell you he should make that play and it is scored an E4. Old infielder's adage nine out of ten go under three things you want to get down your head your butt and your glove and Miggy just never got down to it and it scooted right underneath. That's usually a play and that's a, a play you play it like that if you're playing on AstroTurf. But it's a ball that on grass and dirt you really have to get your body behind it square it up and he never did do that. Second error of the year for Cairo. And here's David Wright. Having an MVP type season. Although four for his last 22 calming down just a little bit. And speaking of that MVP, the Bacardi scatter report, right is right. When he is on, he, he goes to right center a lot. You'll see a lot of balls go to right field and right center. MVP, question mark, he leads in an awful lot of categories. And that tide's rising. He's from Norfolk, Virginia. And he watched the Mets Tidewater Tides AAA team for years. He's a big fan of the sport. He's a, he's a fan of the history of the game. And you really couldn't have a, a, a better ball player and a better teammate and a good kid. He really, really wants to be great, and uh, he does an awful lot of good things as a player. 
If this was an SAT test, you'd say Jeter is to the Yankees what Wright is to the Mets. The person they are building around, the face of their franchise. And there's a strike. And now with an 0 2 count, because of what a threat he is, Messina's got him in a hole. And the crowd wants the uh, strikeout. You would look for Belcher. That's the one thing the Mets can do. They've the last eight times the opposition's been successful against Messina, and the Mets lead the major leagues in stolen bases. So they ought to use that weapon in this series. Just missed outside. Posada went to the dugout. Messina headed to the dugout. Larry Poncino called strikes a little bit late, and they were ready for him to raise his right arm. He never did. Yeah, Larry will probably say I'm on the computer. I mean it. Watch this ball come back. That's a two seam ball. Yeah. Might have been that, a little off. I don't I think from that angle right there that caught the front corner. Part of that ball had the corner. The one two foul back. As hitters give up on that that, that two seam fastball away and Greg Maddox made it the perfection of it where it looks like it's going to be a three six inches outside and then it comes back over the plate and that's exactly what Messina tried to do there. I wonder if umpires give up on it. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. They get fooled sometimes just like hitters. The one two. Posada keeps it in front of him. The count two and two. It was a long time American League umpire John Shulock and he umpired the 91 World Series and he actually watched tapes. We're going to look at Posada break and block the breaking ball. He watched tapes of the different pitchers to kind of find out what they threw in certain counts so you know he could anticipate a little bit or have an idea. So he didn't get fooled. Count still two and two. And in these days with uh, pitch counts, Mike Messina in particular, uh, that call, that pitch not being called a strike, he's now had to throw, I think, an extra five, at least five pitches since then. And also the error by Cairo didn't help me. Would have been out of the inning in 11 pitches, but he's thrown 17 so far. This is the seventh pitch of the at bat upcoming. The 2-2. He struck him out. Went upstairs with the fastball. Right swings through. Strong inning for Messina. No runs, no hits. One error. And one man left on base. It's the New York Mets nothing. And the New York Yankees coming to bat. Big game. The mayor's here. Michael Bloomberg. And he is locked in. Who's he rooting for? I wonder. Well, the Yankees starting lineup presented by Rico. Johnny Damon's in center. He's going to lead off the captain, the shortstop. Derek Jeter will bat second. Great numbers. Lifetime against the Mets. 365, nine homers, 25 ribbies. Jason Giambi DHs. How about third? A-Rod coming off the walk-off home run. Cleans up and bats in the number four hole. And plays third. Jorge Posada, Bernie Williams, Andy Phillips, Melky Cabrera's in left batting eighth. And Miguel Cairo, the second baseman, bats ninth. And Orlando Hernandez is on the mound. You see his numbers, 15 starts, 4 and 7 with the 5.82 ERA. Not good there. More hits per inning. His last start in Toronto was not a good one. The one before in Arizona was very good. So we'll see what it is. The Yankee fans know what to expect. Let's take a look at the Land Rover Pitcher Scatter Report. Big game performer. The Yankee fans know that. 4 and 1 lifetime. Yankees for the Yankees in the World Series. Deceptive arsenal. You'll see him drop down. He'll change speeds. If his fastball's on, he'll look pretty tough on these Yankee hitters. And, and the he, last line was how much left. So let me ask you, how much is left? Well, look, if you get up in age and the velocity drops, you got to start inventing a little bit more. We'll see. Well, he's invented his way to 0-2 on Damon. Well, if you talk to players on both teams, managers, coaches, they'll say you get an early read on El Duque. And the fact that he through two strikes. Ground ball a second backhanded by Valentin. One away. I mean you seldom see him get a three pitch out. 
El Duque is usually get ahead, expand the strike zone. I think he's he's kind of jacked up to put on a vintage El Duque performance in front of this crowd tonight. You see him start tugging at that shirt, going to his cap. He gets his mojo working, gets in a little bit of rhythm. And that's when he's very effective. There's Derek Jeter. Played many of those, all of those World Series games behind El Duque. So El Duque familiar with Jeter's work. And the pitch is high. 1-0. You wonder who has the advantage, a pitcher that has seen these guys bat all the time from the bench or the hitter that has played behind this pitcher for so long. So is Jeter ahead mentally of El Duque right now? History would say, no, he's one for six. Nice play by Wright. In answer to your question, Michael, I think against a, a normal pitcher, not to say that El Duque is abnormal, but he's unpredictable. And so even though you've seen him 15 times, you don't know what you're going to see tonight. You don't know what he's going to throw in any particular count. And if he throws strikes, that's why he's tough, because he doesn't pitch in a regular pattern. Cheater hit that ball sharply and writes right there. Seems very strange El Duque, who defected from Cuba, is dealing to Castro. Just doesn't seem right. Ramon Castro, the catcher. And a breaking ball is low. This Castro won't banish him to the rest, cleaning out restrooms and uh, sanitariums in Cuba like Fidel did to El Duque. The 1 0. Slow, slow, and slower. 69 mile an hour curveball is called the strike. I'm sure, El Duque would have loved to have thrown at Castro. Deep to right, Chavez back on the track, looking up. See ya! A solo home run for Jason Giambi. His 11th home run in June. And the Yankees have a 1-0 lead. Fourth home run of the year for Giambi, and as I mentioned, 11 of them this month. Number 13. Here's Alex Rodriguez, his first at bat since the walk off home run. And some of the thunder or applause that he might have received kind of stolen by the euphoric crowd trying to congratulate Giambi on his home run. So A-Rod's intro by Bob Shepard kind of drowned out. Breaking ball is a strike. The count one and one. The one one. One and two. Well, the book on Giambi years ago is you could jam him. Not anymore. Every time a pitcher has tried to come in there, if they don't get it way in, it's ended up in the seats. Popped up behind the plate. Castro makes the play, and that'll do it here in the first. But the Yankees have a 1 0 lead on one swing. Jason Giambi goes yard, his 24th home run of the year, and the Yankees, after one inning of play, lead the Mets 1 0 right here on. Let's take a look at the JNR Music and Computer World upcoming schedule. The Mets are in tomorrow and Sunday. Tomorrow, Fox does the honors at 120, and then Sunday, ESPN at 8. Then the Indians, the Yankees go to Cleveland Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for a four game set. So the Yankees are in Cleveland on the 4th of July, and our batting practice show, we will have it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So be sure to tune in. By the way, Hope everybody out there who's watching the game has a great holiday weekend. And the pitch is outside the Cliff Floyd. Cliff was just 
brought off the DL today, and the Mets sent down their wonder kind, and that is Lasting's Millage. Cliff has been on the DL since June 17th with a sprained left ankle. Rip to right foul. Tonight's closed captioning presented by your New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut Lexus dealers. Floyd has not had a great year with the Mets. He's, he, before he got hurt, he was swinging the bat a bit better, but hitting just 238. Pops it up. Posada. One out. Here's Jose Valentin. He has emerged as the Mets' second baseman. Kaz Matsui, who really was such a disappointment for two years, finally traded to the Rockies. And one of the reasons they were able to trade him is that Valentin assumed the role. He's not a second baseman by trade, but has done a nice job offensively and really has not hurt them at all with the glove. Nice play by Cairo. Can he make the play at first? He does. Takes a base hit away from Valentin. A sparkler by Miguel Cairo. That's a makes up for play. The other one was pretty routine for Cairo, but this is exceptional. And the exceptional part is not just catching it, but rolling over, getting in position to make the throw right there. And just gets Valentin. And the Yankees liked what they saw here is Julio Franco. Julio Franco is the last man in Major League Baseball active today that could say he faced Jim Cotton. That's right. Intentional walk, 1982. <laughs> Listed at 47. I'll tell you, he's in great shape. And uh, he can hit it off speed pitch. It might get the fastball by him. I don't think he'll see, uh, I don't think he'd see a lot of change ups. Do you, Al? I mean, that, at this age, that's the pitch he could probably catch up with more than any other. You know, Kitty, he, and he's pretty much the same as he was probably when he faced you. Anybody with a high bat like that at wraps? He's been a low ball down out over the plate. If anybody's got a little bit of velocity that can stay up in the zone, that's been, had given him the most difficult time. And especially in, he'll, he'll, you'll see a lot of shattered bats, high, good, plus fastballs on the inside part of the plate. A lot of eyebrows were raised during the offseason when Omar Minaya signed a 47-year-old to a two-year deal. But he's been great off the bench for Randolph. 11 hits as a pinch hitter, and that's tied with the Phillies' David DeLucci for the most in the National League. And there is Omar Minaya, the Mets GM. In fact, Franco is 11 for 30. That's 367 as a pinch hitter. Well, I think that sign was more than just what Julio could do on the field as a 47-year-old ball player. He is a wonderful man, and I think he's very helpful in that clubhouse. Swing and a miss, and Franco down on strike so the Mets go down in order one two three and one of the reasons this play by Miguel Cairo rolls over gets up fires out we go to the bottom of the second we go to the bottom of the second inning here at Yankee Stadium Yankees enjoying a one nothing lead on the strength of Jason Giambi's solo home run in the first inning his 24th home run of the year First game of a three-game set between these two teams and the second round of the Subway Series. The Mets come in with their first three-game losing streak of the year, the, the last team in baseball to suffer a three-game losing streak. Here's Posada. And there's a stroke.
Well, if there's anybody who knows what El Duque's throwing, that's Jorge Posada. And I always thought that the catcher, your old catcher, certainly had a he knew your game plan. And you almost I always felt I had to change my uh, my approach a little bit in some dumb way, I guess, but certainly Jorge knows release point and what to look for and patterns from El Duque. And these two really had a volatile yeah. relationship. Yeah. You know, but it's kind of fun from a pitcher's standpoint because you know, like in Posada's case, he's thinking, well, this is what this is what's coming. And before the game, El Duque is probably saying, well, you know, he he thinks I'm going to do this, but I'll change my pattern. It almost becomes an endless game, though, because if you think that he thinks that you think. That he, th I mean, he going well, back and forth pitch, like tennis. Pitcher only does it once. Okay. You can't do the hitter's <laughs> thinking for him after okay. that. <laughs> and the count three and two. So that is the rule. You just try to think once. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do too much of the hitter's uh, thinking for him. Just kind of have an idea what he might be anticipating. The three two. I had a former teammate uh, Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew and he was known as a guy who could really hit the ball from the middle in. And so the first time I faced him uh, you know, I knew he, he thought well he's not going to throw it there. So I did throw him a couple pitches in there just to just to kind of mess try to mess with his mind and say he never thought you'd throw him in there. You know, if you get by with him you feel pretty good about it. Serve to right. One away. Good variety of off speed pitches and even a little slower with this one. And there again, we, we mentioned in the pregame if El Duque can get ahead with his fastball, you'll even get disciplined hitters like the Yankees to chase those curveballs that are out on the fringe of the strike zone. Here's Bernie Williams. Now, Bernie was on fire during the last road trip, but he has really cooled down. He is two for his last 23. And that one has popped up. And Wright runs out of room. You wonder if at Bernie's age that an off day like yesterday's would benefit him more than other players. There's a strike. And maybe the fact because of the injuries and because he has been so effective and Joe Torre is almost obligated to play him every day because of that that he will wear down a little bit quicker than he usually would. And the off day does pay off as he dunks that one in the right center for a base hit. The yeah, Duque liked to have that one back. You saw Castro's target wanted to backdoor it. And uh, Bernie, another one of those veteran players. The older you get, the tougher it is to catch up with a fastball, and the easier it is to wait and hit that breaking ball. And that's what he hit right there. Well, that's one matchup at first base where Bernie could feel very young. <laughs> He's 10 years younger than Franco. Andy Phillips takes a pitch high. You know, we joke about the fact we don't exactly know how old El Duque is. Uh, no one really does. But he is throwing 89 or 90, so whatever the chronological age is, he certainly is, is not finished. He can get people out. That could be two. There's one. And there's two. So he gets Phillips to bang into a 6-4-3 double play. No runs to hit, no errors, and because of the DP started by Reyes, nobody left on base. Why don't we take it to the third here at the stadium? Yankees won, Mets nothing. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man. Matter with the high five ball. The New York Yankees, the most renowned sports franchise in the world, have won more championships than any other team in the history of sports. Come out to the stadium on Monday, July 17th, as the first 18,000 fans in attendance will receive a Yankees visor courtesy of Cannon. The 2006 New York Yankees. Pride, power, pinstripes.
The New York Yankees and Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center proudly introduce the Yankees Universe T-shirts. Buy yours at Yankees.com or the Stadium Store at Yankee Stadium, and all net proceeds go to Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Yankees Universe makes a world of difference to kids at Sloan Kettering. Let's take a look at tomorrow's starting pitchers. Brought to you by Verizon Online DSL. Now at a great low price. Steve Traxel goes for the Mets. Randy Johnson for the Yankees. Now that game will start at 120. It's on Fox. But we want to remind you that immediately after the game is over, you switch back to yes. Because Kim Jones will do the postgame show. Bob Lorenz back in the studio. The whole deal. So remember, game on Fox, postgame on yes. Here's Andy Chavez. And there's a strike. Also, Bobby Mercer will be a part of the action as well. So we have it covered like a blanket, and we want you to make sure to tune in. The Coors Light scoreboard, 1-0 Yankees, top of the third inning. On the Giambi home run. Grounded to first. Andy Phillips has been very solid at first base. One away. Nice order there. What is that, Wings? Fries. Yes. Michael salivating. Mm. <laughs> Here's Ramon Castro. Really solid backup catcher. Does a good job defensively. Can contribute with the bat. And Paul Laduca, who's been bothered by a Sore left thumb gets a night off, half a night off behind the plate. He's the DH. And the pitch is outside 1 0. The count 1 1. Pedro Martinez who got roughed up in his return to Boston checking out the game from the bench he will not be in this series boy if there's ever a game that points out how mental this game is and you watched a great pitcher like Pedro who received such a great welcome from the crowds but he was noticeably not on his game mentally when he started the other night a little unsure of his control and then uh, the ball that was hit back at him that could have been a, a possible triple play ended up getting one or at least a double play and I think he even admitted uh, afterwards that he was a little affected by the the welcome and the situation in Boston understandable. Well he got a very big ovation and Johnny Damon really got booed when he returned and Damon was asked about Pedro's ovation he goes he wasn't wearing a Yankee uniform. Exactly. And Damon said that they should cheer Pedro for what he meant to the franchise. 3 2. Driven out to right field. Bernie Williams backs up. Two outs. Hey, Sunday on Yes, don't miss an all new episode of the Emmy winning Yes's Ultimate Road Trip Season 2 Challenges Ahead. This week, Julio shines as the group faces off in a culinary showdown. Then, will the rain ruin Old Timers Day? Find out in an all-new episode of Yes's Ultimate Road Trip Sunday at 7.30, only on Yes. Back to the top of the lineup, and Jose Reyes flied out to center on the first pitch in the first inning. Yankees in at the corners. Reyes, great speed. Pitches inside 1-0. Reyes, who's been red hot, was one for 13 in the series in Boston. But he is 33 for his last 70. That's 471. That tells you how hot he was. If you add that one for 13 in there or subtract it, he was over 500 for a long stretch of time. Mets have given up worrying about the fact that He's not a great on-base percentage guy. They think that will come as he gets older, but they don't want him to fixate on it. Just, just hit. Now we've had three look-ins from Messina. Two in this at bat. Derek Jeter looking at Larry Ponsino. Derek Jeter very respectful of his uh, comments for Jose Reyes. New York fans like to start comparing those two, but I think you got to let Jose play about 10 years and see where his position 
where his place in the game ends up. Nice play by Cairo to the glove side. Guns down Reyes and two sparklers for Cairo, who seems extra motivated after that error in the first inning. You want to keep Reyes off the bases, so this play is huge. A tough hop. He stayed with it, gets up, and gets the speedy Reyes to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the third. Yankees lead 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the third inning on the Coors Light scoreboard. 1-2-0 and zeros across. The breaking ball to Cabrera is outside 1-0. Two and oh, the experience advantage is certainly in El Duque's favor against the 21 year old Cabrera half the age of that guy more than half the age and how about that Cabrera wins the experience battle by experiencing a single big turn at first and he leads off the third inning with a base hit. A couple of misses with the curve and got a uh, fastball that Melky could handle. Now here's the situation. I don't know if the Yankees want to play for another run this early, but with Franco at first, all due respect for his age and how he's been able to hit at this, but he cannot move as well at first. So if you want to bunt it down the first baseline uh, with nobody on, you probably got a sure base hit. And if you're going to try to move the runner over, that's the direction you'd bunt it here. And if you're wondering why is Franco playing first, well, Delgado has a strained muscle on his side. So they are keeping him on the active list, but he probably not, not even available as a pinch hitter tonight. <laughs> Cairo two for his last 16. Not only Del Delgado, but uh, Xavier Nady I think they believe he's got a fracture in his uh, in his wrist. So they have a they have a real limited bench. Mets do. Well, their bench then would pretty much be Eli Marrero and Chris Woodward. Does square to bunt takes a pitch high. One and zero. You know, Cairo can do so much with the bat. He's a great situational hit and run hitter. That's why, uh, you know, if that is the feeling here, he certainly can get a feel, bring right in by faking the bunt, but having Cabrera at first with that big hole, Miguel Cairo, that's patented right through the second base hole between Franco and Valentin. Runner goes, and they were trying to hit and run. Ironically enough, he was shooting for the right side, but Valentin stayed at home. It was Reyes who was covering. And that may have been about pitch selection. Let's see what it was. Oh, it was a fastball on the outside. Of course, sometimes a breaking ball, you'll have the shortstop hold his ground. Runner goes again, and that one is blooped in the right center. Melky Cabrera stayed where he was and then heads back to first. He was almost faked out by Valentin, who made as if he was fielding the ball and flipping it to second because he wanted Cabrera to continue on to second, but Cabrera picked up the flight of the ball. You saw Valentin there. Here's Johnny Damon grounded to second in the first off speed pitch way out in front 0 and 1. Damon has great numbers against Del Duque 16 for 39 that's 411 with one home run. And the count 1 1.
Well, there's plenty of history here with Damon. And Hernandez is uh, 421 lifetime, 16 for 38. You saw those two pitches that El Duque started him off with two changeups missed and came back with another one. And with his ground out in the first, 16 for 39. 1-1. One, one. Count 2-1. 1-3-1 and one. One, three and one Yankees. Zeros across for the Mets. They've been unable to touch on Mike Messina. Starting to rain just a little bit here at Yankee Stadium. I was a little concerned about that. It's been such a beautiful day, but Danny Cunningham ran out to say something to Tim McClellan, the crew chief, just before the game. It kind of looked like that's what they were talking about. Maybe a brief shower passing through. Missed outside in the count 3-1. and one. You know, pitcher like El Duque who can do so much, and we're seeing it here with spotting his fastball. He's got about 88 miles an hour, but he's changing speeds on his breaking ball. When you do have a significant history, and 38 batters is a his a significant with Damon, that's where the cat and mouse comes in because both of them know what they've done in the past, and El Duque is able to change that pattern around. Runner goes again. No throw. It was a walk. Pitch was high, so Damon works a walk. Cabrera reaches second, and it's runners on first and second with one out. Every time a Yankees pitcher strikes out an opposing batter, the Tri-State Hyundai dealers will make a donation to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund and the Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital of New York Presbyterian. If you would like to contribute along with the Tri-State Hyundai dealers, call 212-305-1420. Here's Derek Jeter. Jeter grounded to third. A nice play to the glove side by Wright. That was in the first inning. Missed outside, 1 0. Jeter this year, 362 with runners in scoring position. Hitting 330 overall. El Duque gets into trouble and he really slows the game down. He wants to make every pitch perfect and be sure of where he's throwing it and what he's throwing. There's a fastball strike. That one 91 miles an hour. There's Rick Peterson. He's the Met pitching coach and Rick always preaches a right-hander should stay on the first base side of the rubber, but you're not going to tell El Duque what to do. He has his own thoughts. He's right in the middle of the rubber. Rick always carries that uh, car like a, a football coach of the sideline with the first 50 plays. He's got some some set information for the pitchers on there. That that card he carries, it, it's uh, he keeps score, and it's a real unique way of keeping score. He uses uh, different colors for for contact strikes and balls and he does circles and but what he looks at the, the most glaring thing he looks at is as the, as the game gets deeper is how many swing and misses and uh, you know in his opinion you know that that says a lot as to uh, the pitcher stuff on that given night if he's getting many swing and misses especially if it's somebody who has the ability to strike people out now he's a very hands on pitching coach very active with all the pitchers but as a veteran now did you like say hey leave me alone I can do this myself no because a lot of his stuff is, is sensible it, you know it might be at a different level than some people really care for but I, I'm, I'm open for all information whether I use it or not is one thing one two two and two but I certainly didn't have it all figured out so somebody who works as hard as he does and there you see Hernandez pitch count 40 pitches not a very good ball strike ratio could be a factor his last start when he got tossed an inning in 230 through 53 pitches up in Toronto. Best thing these Yankee hitters can do is just be patient, wait it out, get their pitch, have them do things like this, get on the same. He's trying to get on the same page as Castro. Why would it be? Because we saw it here in New York, Jim. That he has such problems with catchers. I mean, they never seem to go smoothly with El Duque. 
Well, because he's got a lot of different pitches and a lot of different ways he wants to go. And sometimes a catcher could just, you know, he sits back there and he knows what a pitcher wants to throw, what he's going to throw. With El Duque, it's different from game to game and inning to inning, probably. Loduga gets to watch today. He's usually behind the plate. Grounded foul. Giambi, who homered in the first, is on deck. And Carlos Delgado sitting this one out. Not a heavy rain, but certainly steady. Friday night. Cabrera gets back to first. Check that second. Damon gets back to first. See, Michael, you said about, and I don't, I don't really know El Duque a whole lot other than just watching from afar. But you know, I, I know what's happened with me. Like even there, stepping off and spinning around. Jose Reyes isn't doing anything. Valentina's just standing there. Sometimes as pitchers, you're kind of confused yourself in the sense of you're not exactly sure what you want. And sometimes you'll agree to the pitch. You come up and eh, I didn't really want to throw that. Step off and it seems like there's an uneasiness is like what's going on here. Uh, I'm not saying El Duque doesn't always know what he wants to throw but when you have such an assortment sometimes uh, you're not exactly sure where you want to throw. Foul the way. Now Duque like a surgeon out there. He, he's not just going to rear back and and challenge you. He wants to outsmart you. He doesn't have that kind of stuff anymore that he can say here just hit it or try to hit it. The two two. Now he wins the battle with Jeter. A high fly ball to center. Beltran's there. He'll make the catch. Tagging is Cabrera. The throw smartly goes to second. So the Yankees have runners on first and third now with two outs. Here's Giambi in the first inning. And he is one player that does not want the month of June to end. 11 home runs this month. David Wright has 10 home runs, so he's number two in the bigs. Since July 1st of last year, if you include the home run he hit in the first inning. So a full calendar year. Jason Giambi has now hit 51 home runs and driven in 128 runs. And his home run in the first inning moved him to within one of Jim Tomey of the White Sox. And that's over 148 games. 51 and 128. Count one and one. Right now the Yankees are in their 77th game so they're not even halfway he's got 24 home runs. Fielded there by Valentin. El Duque covers and he gets out of problems. So Franco ranged forward to his right and he was not in the picture. No runs a hit and two men left. We have played three at the stadium. Yankees won and the Mets nothing. On the eight-time Emmy Award-winning Yankeeography, The Portrait of Perfection, David Cohn. He would try anything he could to get you out. A perfect game for David Cohn! Yankeeography, David Cohn, premieres tonight after the Yankees postgame, only on Yes. Time for the Aflac trivia question as we go to the top of the fourth. Since 97, who are the four pitchers who have started games for both the Yankees and the Mets? I can see one. And the pitch to LaDuke is outside 1-0. 1-3-1, oh. one, one, Yanks. Zeros across for the Mets along with Jim Cott and Al Leiter. I'm Michael Kay. You're watching Yankees baseball right here on Yes. We thank you for joining us on this Friday evening. Top of the fourth, one nothing Yankees. LaDuke with a fly ball to left. Melky Cabrera is there. All one out. Mm -hmm. 
Al gave you the stat in the scouting report, and it really is amazing. Mike Messina has had at least 10 wins in each of the past 14 years. So one more win. He comes into this game at 9-3. and three. One more win would make him the first pitcher in American League history to win 10 or more games in each of 15 seasons. It's amazing. He's tied with a couple of pitchers right now, and one of them happens to be Jim Cott. Jim did it from 62 to 75. Then Hooks Douse, <laughs> Eddie Plank, and as I mentioned, Jim. So he's tied with those four, or those three. Four guys tied with 14 years of it. Got to be awfully consistent and stay healthy. Can't have a year where you miss a lot of starts or miss the year outright. You got to get a lot of starts, be healthy, and uh, play for a good ball club. You think there's any chance that Hooks Douse threw curveballs? I think so. <laughs> I think that's where he got his name. 222 and 182 was his record with the Tigers. Well, Messina didn't like that that call from Poncino, the home plate umpire. And knowing Larry Poncino, this isn't the type of umpire where you turn around and walk around because he'll he'll show you even some more. Well, the, the disturbing thing is between innings, Mike Messina walked off the mound toward the dugout, and Poncino actually walked down the foul line to meet him as if he were welcoming a confrontation. You hate to see that in an umpire. They, they have no stake in who wins or loses. 2-2. Two, two. Strike three. Beltran down looking. Messina looks sharp tonight. Three and two-thirds of no-hit baseball. And this one right on the court. Good late movement. That's uh, the one thing Ron Gibbery talked with Bobby Mercer before the game tonight about, you know, throwing more fastballs in the spring, build up a little arm strength, and then work on the uh, changeup in, in your off speed pitches. I think you'd agree, Al, are, are only as good as the control of your fastball and what you have on your fastball. Here's David Wright. If you can't show a hitter like that that you have a fastball that you can throw for a strike and he's got to be aware of then your off speed pitches aren't going to be that effective. I don't care how hard you throw hitters have to honor the fact that you will throw fastballs in the zone. You'll throw fastballs in fastball counts. And even guys that are below the speed limit they can still sneak an 85 86 mile hour fastball by a hitter. With the assortment of all speed pitches. count one and one and if you look at Messina's great games and he's had many very good games this year it's exactly that he establishes his fastball he throws strikes he's got superior command and it's his changeup. I, I think some of, one of his main adjustments this year has been his ability to take off 20 miles an hour off his comfort fastball which is about 88 89 miles an hour and he just kind of varied his grip a little bit and he was able to take a little bit more off and I think that little speed differentiation of him being able to be 88 to 68 as opposed to 88 to say 74 matters to major league hitters. El Duque is ready to go. He's anticipating another no hit inning for Messina. David Wright 29 RBIs this one and that leads the National League. Mike actually talking to himself out there on the mound. Two one. He blew a fastball by right to end the first inning, and uh, right a little late on that one as well. Fifty pitches for Messina, thirty-two strikes. We're in the top of the fourth inning, two outs, and nobody on. And the two-two. Top -two. that. Well, the Mets did not help out the Yankees by getting swept by the Red Sox, but maybe a former Yankee, Joe Girardi, will. They're in the second inning in Florida, and the Marlins lead the Red Sox 3-0. The Red Sox carry a 12-game winning streak into that weekend series. And the 2-2. 
Still two and two. It's one of those situations where you see him tr almost tripling up on the fastball because Wright's really not catching up with it. And the, the thinking there can be if you throw him something a little slower, he's going to be right on time. Unless you throw it real slow. As you said, he's had the ability to take an awful lot off his fastball. Seventh pitch of this at bat. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did, said the first base umpire, Jerry Davis. Posada will tag him out. And El Duque quickly out of the dugout to take the mound. Three up, three down. Messina's retired 10 in a row. In fact, he's thrown a no-hitter over four. We go to the bottom of the fourth. one nothing Yanks. Hola fanáticos de los Yankees, no se olviden de sintonizar a los Yankees en español por el canal Yes, oprimiendo el botón SAP en su televisor. Brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. Time for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Aflac! Hmm. The question, since 97, who are the four pitchers who have started games for both the Yankees and the Mets? We're going to... Have you wait just a bit longer right after the pitch will tell you. The pitch to uh, A-Rod is inside 1-0. We know Al Leiter is one of them. El Duque, David Cohn, and Kenny Rogers. 1-1. One one. You were teammates with Kenny, right? Yeah. A little bit in 99. And you were teammates with David Cohn. For yes. a couple of days. High fly ball left field. Cliff Floyd drifts back. One away. Now lighter. Dealing for the Mets. He's pumped. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a spring training game. <laughs> <laughs> now is that the breaking ball? Oh, Curveball. Oh, yeah. Georgie's a good fastball hitter. Almost a 12 to 6 curve. I can still throw that. Today? I threw it the other day in a little shoot. <laughs> Did you like pitching in these subway series? Yes. Maybe? Yes, I enjoyed it very much. Now, there are a lot of players that do not enjoy this because they think that there's enough pressure during the season and this just adds more pressure. 50 pitches for El Duque, 31 strikes. But it's hard to argue with the success of it. Interleague play has a higher average attendance around baseball than regular play. Well, I never, I never really figured that pressure thing if you allow it to enter. And I understand it's around because that's the nature of, of sports. You've got to perform. You have to get it done. Once you get prepared and you do all of your pregame preparation, you get on the field right now, you wear your hat properly, and you're looking down into the catcher in the zone, you already went over the scout report. You know, whether you look up and see 56,000 people or not, I, I don't understand as you see a buckets of rain coming down now. And the wind is really whipping up as well. Danny Cunningham, who knows all as the Yankee head grounds crew member, is ready to spring into action. The one, two. Strike three, Posada down looking. Boy, that's classic El Duque, that, that bat right there. He threw Jorge an awful lot of curveballs, like you said, Al. Good fastball hitter. And then paints the inside corner. See, there's one that the hitter gives up on, thinks the umpire missed, but it, it the late movement took it right across the corner. Especially after all those curves, sliders he threw. The three previous pitches didn't go over 74 miles an hour. Interesting the the whole uh, buzz of baseball fans today was wow no rain delays tonight it's a beautiful day <laughs> and it was Bernie fouls it away well if he could get through this at bat and I'm not hoping for anything other than uh, maybe these uh, get the uh, top of the fifth in if it were to stay. It would be an official game. Now there is not heavy rain in the forecast all night, so this could just be passing through. That one's popped up right back, so is Reyes. And it drops in for a base hit. Birdie makes a big turn, he'll stop right there. 
Bernie's two for two. And you see the expression on Willie's face. I said, wait for Reyes to play 10 years and find his place in the game. And he will with it. But see, this is a ball that Derek Jeter's going to catch right there. That's, that is a much easier play for the shortstop. And Reyes just kind of gives way. He's got to take charge on that one and get over. That's a much more difficult catch for right over the shoulder. You think that the rain plays into that at all because you're looking up and the rain's going into your eyes? Well, it might, but but his whole approach. I mean, uh, Reyes didn't right. really fly after the ball like he want, like he was going to catch it. It and is it, really coming down now. Pits to Andy Phillips is high. Well, the rain had some effect on there, but if you look at those flags out there whipping, that that wind out there is swirling. Now the reason that they're not bringing the tarp on at this point you know Jim told you earlier that Danny Cunningham was talking with Tim McClellan well they they have a, a pretty good idea of when it's going to end and if this is just a quick thunderstorm and it's going to pass through if it's a long long drawn out thing that they see on the radar then the umpires would put the tarp on right now wind really whipping up and it's going to be hard for the batters with all the papers blowing through their line of sight. Playing field starting to look like Candlestick Park in the old days. With the papers flying all over. It almost looks like Tim is, is trying to wait till the inning gets completed. There's Tim McClellan, the crew chief. And it, you see he's glancing over at Danny Cunningham right now. Runner goes the one two they had a hit and run on and Phillips fouls it off. How tough is it for a pitcher in this weather. Look like Danny Cun Cunningham said cover it but how tough is it for a pitcher in this weather with the you know the ball it, being wet. It, it, the balls are fine. You, you get it from the umpire. Oh here's Tim McClellan calling out Danny now with the tarps. Really, the, the biggest problem for a pitcher is the footing on the mound. You, you get a lot of clay caked up on your feet, and it's difficult to to land and slipping and sliding more than anything else. Well, we have seen so much rain in this area the last week and a half, and uh, all the weather reports that you heard pretty much told you that this is going to be a wonderful holiday weekend, but uh, starting off in somewhat of a dubious fashion as the rain really coming down here with two outs, in the fourth inning so the Yankees have a one nothing lead and how long the rain holds the game up will dictate whether or not El Duque comes out the pitch and Mike Messina comes out the pitch they don't like to shut down better for that long and fire them up after that so while we're waiting you know what the deal is we're going to send it back to our studios where Bob Lorenz who certainly has had a lot of practice in this will take the handoff Bob bottom of the fourth inning Yankees have a runner on first base there's a one two count on Andy Phillips and you can see the grounds crew is getting the uh, the infield together El Duque is warming up on the third base side so he's going to come out and pitch and as you saw just now Ron Vallone is warming up in the Yankee bullpen so incredibly with a no hitter Mike Messina after a rain delay of about an hour when game time resumes is not going to pitch which is you know a lot of people are going to question that you know that, that is really a shocker because you'd think you know El Duque we talked about his age <laughs> but he's going to go back out there now usually Al I don't know about your experience but during a rain delay when you come back after it you never really know how you feel until you go out and warm up sometimes your arm is looser sometimes it's not uh, I go back I was talking to Keith Hernandez the one of the Mets announcers and in the 82 World Series uh, John Stuper pitched game six I think the game lasted about five hours and he pitched through three or four rain delays that that went at least 40 minutes uh, but it appears that I don't know if Joe Torrey has made that decision and just said look we're not going to take any chances we don't care if he's got a no hitter but I know from a from a personal standpoint now you got multi-year contract so it's not quite as urgent but you'd want to go to them and say hey at least let me go out and throw see how I feel yeah well I'm I'm a little different in the sense that not everybody 
actually said I was smart about a lot of things, but a, a couple things. I, I'm, I'm three outs away from a win, so I guess for those reasons, uh, I would like to uh, try to stay out there. But who, look, we're not, we're not in the trainer room. We're not in Mucina's body. Uh, you know, he did have some issue last year with arm uh, problems. So, you know, maybe he did feel something enough to, for that layover. How long has been the layover? It's going to be about an hour when they throw the first All right, pitch. so during that hour, he's probably in the trainer room. Uh, you know, Steve Donahue or, or Gene Monaghan, the trainers, might have given him a massage or rub again. And, you know, maybe he just felt something that just... I got to I got to believe it was Joe Torre's decision said look we're going to look at the big picture because you, you never know how your arm is going to I mean he's got four no hit innings so you never know how your arm is going to feel until you pick up a ball and throw it 60 feet. Is there a set time Jim where if a rain delay went this amount of time you say you know what I better not go back out. I, I have never I don't can't count the number I don't know exactly how many but my experience has been let me go back out and you warm up and sometimes it feels like an 18 wheeler rolled over your arm and you just can't get it loose. And then other times you go out there and you know it's uh, uh, you've had a little bit of a say an hour delay and you throw a few pitches say hey my arm feels pretty good but I I never knew how it was going to feel until I at least went out there and threw the ball. I, I, again, I think it all depends on, on the pitcher, obviously, and the style and, and how uh, they feel. And uh, clearly, either whether it was Joe or Mussina saying, uh, you know, I don't feel great and uh, get somebody warming up. But clearly, that's that's the decision. It'd be pretty hard for me to say I don't feel great if I had a no-hitter going. <laughs> See, that, no, that let's was... say you pitched a no-hitter. Oh, now, I'm now, not... now, four innings are in. And you pitch a no, you got a no hitter going, and there's a delay. What, what's your mo? Oh, I'm coming out. I, right. I, I'll, I'll figure out a way to flip <laughs> yeah. it up there. It's a one, one nothing game in the Subway Series, and Nusin is having a having a great year. Uh, you know, so th there's no doubt about what I would do. But uh, you know, again, it's all different. Guys are different. How they how they prepare. You know, maybe this uh, time off uh, really, you know, really sets things back for Mike. Now, sure. the thing that, I mean, it's, it's a little unfair for us to do this because, as Al just said, we don't know what Mike Messina is feeling. But the thing that makes it look bad is that the opposing pitcher is probably 71, 72 <laughs> years old. And he's had the, the same length rain delay, and he's going to come out and pitch. And yeah. that's unfortunate for Mike because people are going to say, well, how come El Duque can come out and you yeah. can't? Because different pitchers are different. You true. know what? Look, Kitty threw, uh, you know, quick pitch, little sinker, and changed speeds, and I took every ounce of effort and energy to try to throw it as hard as I could. So, you know, there was some guy. I, I had, I'll tell you this, there was a rain delay before we started the game. My brother Mark, who played in the major leagues, he was pitching with the Phillies. I was with the Marlins. We both warmed up. We're hot. We're done. We come into the dugout, ready to start the game. It starts to rain. Tarps on the field. Game canceled. Leland decides to back me up a few days, and my brother... Terry Francona was managing the Phillies at the time, went out the next day and pitched. And why it was a big deal to me and my family was because it's only happened, you know, once or twice uh, that brothers actually start against each other. Now, did you try to sell, hey, let me pitch the next day? Yes. And, you know, Jim made the decision, said, no, you know, I know your style and I'm going to back you up a couple days. Well, interesting and interesting subplot. And, and let's be honest, in, in case you just joined us, Mike Messina, you could never predict somebody's going to throw a, a no-hitter, but he was superb. He looked great out there throwing strikes, changing speeds, and the Mets looked overmatched. And uh, now he's not going to come out for the uh, the top of the fifth inning. So not only does he not get a chance for the win, but the Yankees also are jeopardizing their chance for a win because one of the weak spots of this team this year has been the bullpen. And now the bullpen is going to have to get 18 outs. So that's another thing to consider. Well, and you've seen his last start. He went three and two thirds of perfect, perfect ball against the Marlins. Well, and that's the, that's the other thing with Mike is that, you know, he's tonight he's so economical. He just breathed, yeah. breathed through. He hadn't had a lot of stressful innings, so it, it really is a a shock. But I would I would have to say it's all tied into Joe Torre. will say we're looking at the big picture. We got uh, it's not even the All Star break. We're going to take no chances, even if he's got a no hitter going. Well, we, we could maybe put this little angle on it too. By him only throwing 53 pitches, does does he come back sooner than the five days? And give him two starts, as opposed to one more start before the All-Star break. 
Well, in case you just joined us and you're wondering, well, how did the Yankees have a one nothing lead? Well, you know, through the magic of tape, we're going to show you how they have a one nothing lead. Jason Giambi, his 11th home run of the month of June, his 24th home run of the year. He's pulled to within one of Jim Tomei for the American League lead. And uh, the Yankees have held on to that one nothing lead. Now, here's the situation. Bernie Williams dropped a single just over the head of David Wright and Jose Reyes with two outs in the fourth inning. Bernie's now two for two. Andy Phillips tried to hit and run, fouled it off, and the count is one and two on Andy. So we're ready for baseball. How about that? Andy, in the second inning, wrapped into a 6-4-3 double play. Amazing. About an hour rain delay. Doesn't look as if anybody has left the ballpark. Subway Series, Mike. Big tickets. And the 1-2. Foul back. The official rain delay... One hour and three minutes. One oh three. Bernie leads off first. And he goes. Pitches outside. A stolen base for Bernie Williams. Pick the right pitch on which to steal. Yeah, no chance for Castro. See, as soon as El Duque picks up his leg, Bernie's on his way doesn't even have to slide and the 2 2 line drive base it to left field charging is Floyd rounding third and heading home Bertie Williams here's the throw cut off by right an RBI single by Andy Phillips and the Yankees manufacture a run. They lead 2 nothing. Well, Andy Phillips reaches down on this slider, stays with it. He's, I'll tell you, he's been in the, in the lineup more often, and he's been hot. Seeing that batting average creep up to 290, he's getting a lot of at-bats, and he's been doing an awful lot of that. That stolen base putting Bernie in running in scoring position there. With a guy who's able to handle the bat like Andy Phillips right now. Here's Melky Cabrera. Single in the third inning against El Duque. And that's driven down the right field line. Fair ball, it's trouble. It's a foul ball. Not much room down there, but it found foul territory. About 10 feet foul. It looked like a... Uh breaking ball last couple breaking balls yeah nice grab last couple breaking balls by El Duque left a little high and that's probably the one thing after a long delay it would take you a little longer to get the feel of they chase back Phillips Buzzes him inside. About field before, right before this game started, this is a fastball up and in on Melky. Smell a little rawhide. He was warm. He didn't go down there with the bullpen. He, he warmed up right on flat ground. Warmed up on flat ground in front of the dugout. You don't see that too often in this day and age. Doesn't take long to warm up a Rolls Royce. one-one grounded softly to Valentin over to Franco and that will do it here in the fourth a long fourth with an hour and three minute rain delay Yankee score a run on two hits we go to the fifth two nothing Yanks. 
I'm Ron Bob Lorenz back in our Yes Studios with this Nissan update. Let's check the Red Sox and Marlins. Top of the sixth, five zip Marlins. And after Dontrell Willis balked runners to second and third, Manny comes up with a base hit to right. Those two runs score, so it's now 5-2. The D train has struck out six Red Sox. They're headed to the bottom of the sixth. Michael? Thank you, Bob. Dontrell Willis was so impressive against Mike Messina his last time out. Lost that game 2-1, to one, so pitching a pretty good game against the Red Sox right now, trying to snap their 12-game winning streak. Time for the call to the bullpen, brought to you by the McDonald's Dollar Menu. And Joe Torre does call to the bullpen, and he calls on Ron Vallone. There's Vallone's record, like uh, most of the relievers that come out of the pen, one number he'd like to improve on. Most relievers other than Mariano is the uh, base on balls. And Cliff Floyd leads off. And the pitch is inside 1 0. On the Chevy scoreboard, it's 2 0 Yankees, 2 5 and 1 for the Yanks. And Mike Messina, over four innings, was pitching a no hitter. And only an E4 kept him from being perfect over four. Broken bat, fly ball, right field. Bernie Williams, one away. Al, I think, I think the comment you made may. It factored into it. You're looking at the All Star break and you're saying uh, if Messina pitches tonight, he's going to come back again Wednesday, which would probably be his last start. Maybe this way they'll fit in two starts. So, from a team standpoint, you'd think that maybe Joe Torre just took the ball out of his hands and this is what we're going to do. Because you'd be uh, fighting and scratching to get back out there from an individual standpoint. Here's Valentin. And the count 1 0. Oh. Well, they get Valentin over to the right side, which is, uh, he didn't compile those numbers right there as a right hand hitter. He's a switch hitter, but he is predominantly a left hand hitter. And the count 2 0. Oh. Three and zero oh to Valentin. First game of a three-game Subway Series. Julio Franco on deck. Right down the middle, three and one. It is amazing how quickly this field gets in playable condition. Once it stops raining with this new field, boy, it just drains and you hardly see water uh, kick up when the ball's hit. And Valentin walks. First walk issued by Yankee pitching. Here's Franco. He struck out in the second inning against Mike Messina. And Franco in a little bit of a slump. Two for his last 15. <laughs> it almost seems as if Franco is defying father time because pitchers that, or should I say, Ball players that are in their 40s usually are pitchers, not not position players. And the fact that that he's an important player on this Met team at the age of 47 is really an incredible thing. And he said he intends to play until he's 50. He's going to be 48 in August, but he wants to play when he's 50. Good for him. Hope he does. Years ago, it was uh, like if you got in your mid 30s, everybody figured, well, that's the end of a career for a baseball player. But with uh, improved conditioning, where players keep themselves in shape the year round, now they extend their careers much longer than that. In fact, tonight, Dave Winfield threw out <clears throat> the first pitch. And I think Dave, that was one of the most incredible feats in his career he sat out a whole year with back surgery and at age 39 came back and was productive there he is going out the first pitch before tonight's game 
And he could have pitched in the big leagues. The prevailing thought was because at the University of Minnesota, he pitched, he played basketball, he was drafted in baseball, basketball, and football. Never spent a day in the minor leagues. Looked like he makes a good choice, though, playing the outfield. Got to the Hall of Fame. Franco on April 20th became the oldest player in big league history to hit a home run. He was 47 years old, 240 days. There's Winnie. Mentioning how old Franco is, he, he kind of got ripped a little after a year against the white with the White Sox bat 319 he ended up going to Japan and then came back and played for Cleveland went back to Japan went to Mexico went to Korea back to Mexico he's, he's got over 2500 hits you wonder you know the whole 3000 hit Hall of Fame career yeah, it'd be tough to, to get there he's just not an everyday player anymore but Omar Minaya saw enough of him, and Al mentioned this before, probably a lot of clubhouse influence as well, gave him a two-year deal. That's the only way that Franco would leave the Braves. Braves wanted him back, but they wanted to sign him to a one-year deal. Swing and a miss. Runner goes. Throw to second. In time. Valentin on a slow track. Not making up much ground, so a strike him out, throw him out, double play. It's an official game. No runs, no hits, no errors, and because of the caught stealing, Nobody left on base. We're halfway through. Yankees two, and then the Mets nothing. Yankees baseball on, yes, is brought to you in part by Sony Bravia LCD TV, the official HD TV of the Yankees. Bottom of the fifth inning, two nothing Yankees, and Miguel Cairo will lead off. It'll be 9-1-2 and two in the Yankee order against El Duque. Chevy scoreboard, 2-5-1 and one and zeros across. Pitch is high, 1-0. El Duque has thrown 67 pitches. Grounded to short, Reyes. One away. Want to remind everybody, tomorrow afternoon, you turn back to yes after the final out of the Yankees-Mets game on Fox. For the Nissan post game, you join Bob Lorenz, Bobby Mercer, David Justice, and Kimberly Jones for detailed analysis of the game, interviews with players, plus scores and highlights from around baseball. The Nissan post game tomorrow after the Yankees Mets game only on yes. Pitch is outside to Damon. 1 0. Slap the other way foul. Mets pitching staff for the most part, you talk about their three, four, and five starters. The Mets pitching staff has compiled an impressive 3.95 ERA, which is second in the National League to San Diego. The Padres are 3.89. The best ERA in baseball belongs to the Detroit Tigers at 3.45. 72 pitches for El Duque, 45 strikes. And the Mets bullpen is the number one bullpen ERA-wise in the major leagues with a 3.22 ERA. 2-2. About that. Said the other day when Dontrell Willis is pitching, who's cranking up a good one against the uh, Red Sox tonight, that would be a, a duel worth buying a ticket for to see Dontrell and El Duque, two pitchers with style. Fly ball right field. Andy Chavez will run out of room. 
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the aforementioned New York Yankees. Hat from the Cuban national team. Three, two. Again fouled back, making El Duque work. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat upcoming. Bottom of the fifth inning, two nothing Yanks. The three two again slapped away. And Damon likes to do this in reviewing his first half with the Yankees. He said, I really would like to have more long pitch at bats and walk more. He's had a very good first season with the Yankees. But this is a perfect at bat for a leadoff man. You wear out the pitcher. And you give all the other hitters another long look at his stuff. Strike three, Damon down looking. So a long at bat won by El Duque. Threw him a little of everything. Couple slow curves, fouled off some tough pitches, and then that, I mean, that's just a perfect pitch location-wise. It's a, another one of those that looks like it's inside and tails back across the inside corner. Here's Derek Jeter. Jeter's 0 for 2, grounded to third and fly to center. Count 0 and 1. That got a piece of Larry Poncino. And Castro will go out and talk with El Duque, give Poncino some time to walk it off. Some of the retired numbers out left center field. The Mets are one team that doesn't have to go out there because they've been at Yankee Stadium plenty of times. But you see some of the teams coming in interleague play and that's the first thing some of the young players do. I guess they got enough room out there for a couple more because certainly number two and number 51 will probably be out there. Probably number six too. Yeah. Inside out of the other way and a fair ball down the right field line. Andy Chavez fields and he holds Derek Jeter to a single. Nice play by Chavez in the corner and he's come at Derek with the quite a few fastballs. That's one fouled it off. Missed with that one. Now it looks like he's going to triple up. Yeah, another one. I, I think he may have wanted that down and away, but he threw three consecutive fastballs, and that's a patented Derek Jeter hit. Look where Chavez is right now, and he gets down in the corner and uh, plays what oftentimes would be a double and holds Derek to a single. Nice play. Here's Giambi, home run in the first inning. up shallow right center coming on Beltron and he makes the play for the final out of the fifth no runs to hit no errors and one man left on base we have played five here at Yankee Stadium an hour and three minute rain delay in the middle as we go to the six it's two nothing Yanks well the end of the top of the fifth inning for the Mets strike him out throw him out double play let's take a look at the low jack caught steal well the fastball to Franco for the strikeout and Valentin out by plenty Hey, between Posada and Stinnett, the Yankee catchers have uh, got to be pretty much near the top in percentage of throwing out base runners, base stealers, potential base stealers. Pitch to Chavez is foul back. Chavez has been a good player coming off the bench for the Mets. He gives him speed. A pesky bat does a good job in the outfield. And the Mets have certainly had their share of injuries in the outfield. Not to the extent of the Yankees, but they've lost Xavier Nady, Cliff Floyd for extended periods of time. Boy, sometimes you can pitch out of that bullpen and go a half a season without getting decisions. If you're a middleman, Ron Valone's got a chance to pick up another win. He got the 
win on Wednesday afternoon. And the 0-2. Missed outside, 1-2. and two. Well, Wednesday afternoon, he didn't pitch nearly as much as he's <laughs> going to do here, so not quite the uh, possible vulture win. And when he came in on Wednesday, he walked the batter, and then Jeff Francoeur had a screaming line drive to Derek Jeter, so he just happened to be the guy that was in the game when A-Rod hit the two-run home run. More a victory of circumstance than excellence. And it's starting to rain again here at the stadium. And the one two. Slice toward left field. Melky Cabrera will play it on a hop. Lead off single by Chavez and he can run. Nice at bat. Fouled off a couple tough pitches. Got a, a high fastball and got on top of it. Hit it the other way. A lot of times left hand hitters just hit lazy fly balls to left on that pitch. And Chavez jumps out to a big lead at first. Ballone goes right after him. Now as a left-hander, Al, since you could see the guy leading, do you ever throw over there on your own or do you no. wait for the sign from the catcher? Oh, absolutely. You, you could look him in the eye and get a feel as to whether he's going to run or not. Now is your gauge the same if you look at that? For years, the Yankees didn't have that cutout on first base, but I always thought when a runner got both feet beyond that little semi-circle cutout line. That was a base stealer's lead. Well, but it also showed sometimes that it's a one-way lead where if they got so far out, you knew they were going to just show, bait you to go back. It was basically, I'm going the way out, I want you to throw over. And then conversely, especially a guy like Chavez who can run, he's had uh, 32 stolen bases, 21 stolen bases uh, in the major leagues. He's definitely a base stealer. They might shorten up a little bit and go on first move. If, if they can't pick anything up from the left hander I've always felt a good base runner they usually just go on first move anyway and just guess that was a slide step by Ballone hardly lifted his leg and what Al's talking about by first move I think Lou Brock probably made this famous maybe Maury Wills but as soon as Ballone picked up his will pick up his front foot if he goes on first movement He'll just head towards second and, and gamble that Andy Phillips can't catch the ball and throw him out. But now all, like Ballone did on that last pitch, shows a quick little step. Now he can't go first move because he has to think that Ballone might do this quick step again. For me, left-handed pitchers, the best way to keep a base runner close is to just vary your time. Unless you got an Andy Pettit kind, kind of leg kick to where you can freeze a guy and still throw to first, which very few guys can do that. Vary your times, meaning come up, set, count. One with that, you know, four seconds, go home. Next time, count one second, go. Another slide step by Ballone. Now, when you slide step, how much does that take away from the quality of your pitch? I never, I really didn't like slide stepping, but I had managers say, look, you do it all, and I won't call it. And uh, if you do it, then I, I realize that you're showing you kind of your whole package. There's a slide step. I felt as though it would quicken my delivery enough to where possibly I could leave pitches up. But in order to show it, you could pick a spot in the count where you just throw a fastball away and kind of waste it just to show them that you have it. That was not the slide step, and that's a strike to count two and two. And I say that because I did not have a good move, but when I varied my times and leg kicks and quickened up a few times, I, you could freeze a runner. How much did you envy a guy like Andy Pettit for? It almost bait a runner to go, or even just to have him get out there. Like, this is a pretty good lead right there. Castro swings and misses. One away. Looks like Ron Vallone's best fastball. And in a good spot. A little above the belt, tough to catch up with.
Here's Jose Reyes. You know, a lot of this stuff, too, frustrates hitters to where, I think you might have mentioned this, Kitty, where you, you're throwing over, stepping off, slide step, quick step. You know, the hitters kind of get a little impatient, too. And you could, you could do a real quick step home and surprise the hitter once in a while after them seeing you throw over so often. Larry Boa constantly getting uh, the infielders attentions and attention and what he's telling uh, Andy Phillips is beware holding him on the bag right there Reyes can push that with his speed he can push a bunt down to the first base side and uh, pick up a base hit two nothing Yankees lead top of the sixth. A speed combination for the Mets Chavez at first and Reyes at the plate. Now what's the danger guys of taking too much of your attention away from the hitter. Your inability to throw strikes. If you're that type of pitcher that can't handle this but. You know, Ron Delon's been pitching a long time and if he's got a, a problem with it most of these. He's doing on his own he's seeing the runner and he could he could throw over on his own he's not getting it. Got him. Got him. They kept going and going and they finally got him. Well, that was a perfect combination by Valone. He'd given him a couple high leg kicks. That was a little mini kick, and it froze Chavez, and he got him easy. You can see that first move once he did that. Like he was going. Grounded foul. She had just barely picked that front foot up. And probably gave the base runner the uh, feeling he was going to slide step and go home. That has to be an awful feeling. And the one one high pop up shallow left center Jeter backpedals coming in is Damon and he makes the play precariously for the final out of the inning no runs a hit no errors and because of the pickoff nobody left on base we played five and a half here at the stadium it's the Yankees two and the Mets nothing and now here's a word from Fox News Channel. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning and the Yankees lead the Mets 2 nothing. Now you might hear in the background as we move along in this game it sounds like a different voice over the public address system and that's because it is. Bob Shepard started the game but had to um, go to the bullpen. Um, he's been battling laryngitis so Mr. Shepard headed home and Rick Cerrone the Yankees media relations director is filling in in the pinch. A Rod leads off against El Duque. Popped up. First base side. Franco runs out of room, as does Castro. What a great shot from the left field upper deck. Now, now that guy's going to ruin it by standing in front of the <laughs> camera. You know, Alex's uh, last at bat, he, he hit the game winner by turning on a an inside fastball from Sosa and actually the one off El Duque he just missed that high fly to left so he's much more conscious of that foul back to the screen 0 and 2 and that tells me that in uh, dugout terms the hitters will say you got to cheat on that fastball a little bit get out early and show the pitcher that you could pull the ball fight that pitch off or not let it beat you. Did he hold up. Yes he did. Alex had good success has good success against El Duque. Of his seven he's seven for twenty five for two eighty. Until these last two at bats went down a little bit but three home runs. Popped up. 
shallow right coming in Andy Chavez. And the cheers of the walk-off home run now turning to booze because the guy's 0 for 3. So they've really given him a lot of slack. Samsung's four seasons have opened. Joe Torre have teamed up to make a difference in the community. For every Yankees home run hit at home this year, Samsung's going to donate $1,000 to Joe Torre Safe at Home Foundation to help end the cycle of domestic violence. You can join the team and support Samsung's home run for kids by visiting fourseasonsofhope.com or joetorre.org because a little hope can make a big difference. Pitch outside to Jorge Posada, 1-0. Yankees will try to mix and match with their bullpen. Uh, Scott Proctor beginning to warm. Malone has given them two shutout innings. Count 1-1. One one. Posada a little too quick on the slider. center field that is going to be trouble it splits the outfielders and it goes to the wall and Posada will jog in the second with a double Duque trying to tease him with some slow curves and so I'll try to sneak a fastball by him but he did not get it in he threw it down the center and Jorge centered it Bernie Williams against El Duque. El Duque with 89 pitches, 58 strikes. Some stirring in the Met bullpen right now. And the pitch to Bernie is a strike. Bernie's two for two tonight. Single to right center and a boot single to left. Stole a base and scored a run. And the count one and one. They're in the seventh inning in Florida and the Marlins lead the Red Sox five to two Red Sox with a 12 game winning streak and also the Red Sox have played 16 straight errorless games which is a major league record and that's the difference with this Red Sox team than teams in the past this team has built more around defense than just overwhelming teams offensively. One two. Took something off that pitch. Bernie way out in front. Two away. A couple hooks. He did get the fastball in to Bernie and now comes back with another one. That had a little more downbreak. He not only throws them at different speeds, some of them will break a little more to the side, some will break down. So uh, his curveball oftentimes becomes two or three different pitches. Two way runner on second. Here's Andy Phillips. He's one for two. He drove in a run last time up with a single to left. High fly ball, left field. Floyd will put it away, and that will do it here in the sixth. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the seventh inning at the stadium. Yankees two, and the Mets nothing. Hey fans, get a second chance to see the latest game with WB Mason Presents Yankees Encore. It's only on Yes. Tune in every night or the next morning at 9 for the big hits and great plays another time around. Don't miss WB Mason Presents Yankees Encore only on Yes.
IO digital cable scoreboard shows the Yankees leading 2 0. The Mets just one hit against two Yankee pitchers. Mike Messina went four innings, then a rain delay necessitated Ron Ballone coming in for two, and now Scott Proctor will take over to pitch the seventh. 49 innings, less than a hit per inning. Respectable earned run average. Scott really effective early in the year. He's, uh, I think he still pitched more innings than any American League reliever. And Joe trying to just uh, fit it together. Ballone for a couple, probably uh, Proctor for one. Farnsworth threw two thirds of an inning yesterday. And a day off in between. Yeah. Wednesday, that's right. Two thirds, so everybody available down there. If Proctor leads all of American League relief pitchers with 49 innings. Here's LaDuca. It'll be LaDuca, Beltron, and Wright. Two, three, and four in the Met order. And the pitch outside, 1 0. Oh. Proctor was going to be the loser. If not for Alex Rodriguez on Wednesday, he gave up that home run to Marcus Giles in the top of the 12th inning. But A-Rod bailed him out. Grounded to second. Cairo. One away. Here's Beltron. He is 0 for 2. Reached on an E4 in the first and struck out looking against Messina in the fourth. Now the rain delay in taking Messina out after four innings will have an impact on the Yankees because they don't have a day off until the All-Star break. So after this three-game set, a four-game set in Cleveland, and then three games in Tampa Bay to finish off the first half and right now you're in the middle of getting 18 outs from your bullpen. Which would put more pressure on Randy Johnson to give them a long outing tomorrow. High five ball down the left field line. Melky Cabrera in the corner makes the play for the second out. That ball came back on him. That's why he has that smile on his face. Well, early in the game, the wind was swirling, but evidently there's still, still some effect. He plays it right. He looks at the wall, get there first, and then he's got time to come back and catch it in fair territory. Melky's done a real nice job out there. Yeah, his reads, uh, because of the size of left field at Yankee Stadium, you got to read that ball get a good jump on it. And the pits too. David Wright is a strike. Wright struck out twice against Messina. And now Jorge Posada is calling out Joe Torre and Gene Monahan. He saw something he didn't like from Scott Proctor. Well, if radar guns mean anything, uh, Scott's usually a high 90 guy. The fastballs were 91, 92. He got outs, but it wasn't his power fastball. Now, did he do something to his arm or his leg? Now, that last fastball was 97. Ah. So maybe he tried to do too much. But he had been, as Jim was just telling you, 90-91 for the first two batters, and then he, he cranked it up to that. And you don't know if the radar gun's right, but on that one it was 97. I think I just read his lips. He said, I want to finish this job. Well, it probably helps the uh, the Met pitchers a little bit right now because Willie Randolph and Rick Peterson had a long conversation between innings. We're going to get a look at that last pitch. Hmm. I didn't see anything there, but uh, Posada did. But anyway, it, it looked like they were going to allow El Duque to go out the next inning and then suddenly with two out they've uh, they've gotten two pitchers up so they'll have a little time to get ready. Popped up and out of play. Wow. 
Mike Myers up in the bullpen. Cliff Floyd's on deck. And the 0-2. He blew it right by him. 97 upstairs. And David Wright has the hat trick. He has struck out three straight times. So Scott Proctor said he wanted to finish the job, and he did as he retires the Mets in order one, two, three. At the end of six and a half innings of play, it's time for the seventh inning stretch here at Yankee Stadium. Yankees lead the Mets 2-0, and everybody here at the stadium stands to honor America as we will listen to God Bless America. Hi, everyone. Bob Lorenz back in our Yes Studios with the Tri-State Quality Ford Update. The Tigers, oh, what a play here. Bottom of the eighth, 7-6. They're hanging on. Two outs. Tying run aboard, but Curtis Granderson robs Ronnie Paulino. So how key was that? Well, Detroit just closed the door on them. They won at 7-6. They're 55-25. That's the best record in baseball. Meantime, Florida leads the Red Sox 5-2 right now, and Toronto beat the Phillies 8-1. Another update coming up in just a bit, but now back to the stadium. Thank you, Bob. In the bottom of the seventh inning on the I.O. Digital Cable scoreboard, it's 2-0 Yankees. The Mets have been held to one hit over seven innings by three different Yankee pitchers. And Al Duque, I guess, politicked his way into staying in the game. So Willie Randolph is staying with the veteran right-hander, and he will start the bottom of the seventh inning. He's thrown 94 pitches so far, El Duque has. And he's going to face Melky Cabrera. And the breaking ball is a strike. They count El Duque's pitches on the scoreboard here as they do uh, in most stadiums these days. But I wonder if the Mets do. I don't think it makes any difference to him. He was so accustomed to pitching complete games. He once told me, he said, you didn't look to a bullpen in Cuba. He said no. that it didn't exist. You had to finish the game. It didn't matter how many pitches you threw. Well, and that really teaches you how to pitch because now when you have to face these guys a third and fourth time, uh, you know, you learn how to pitch in different patterns and learn how to finish off a ball game. Popped up going to be a tough play. Ray is back. Makes a nice play as he got a good jump and hauled it in. Yeah, I took charge on this one. The uh, the one that resulted in a second Yankee run. He got a little bit of a slow start, gave way to David Wright, and he makes a nice running grab on that one. Well, as far as pitch counts, you know, the, the hour rain delay obviously affects anybody, but I, I felt as you get a little older and your career's closer to the end than the beginning, you know, you could throw those pitch counts out. You know, it's about this game, this opportunity of winning a major league game in this venue. You know, you're really not saving it for anything. You're not holding back for, you know, next year or the year after. I'm not saying El Duque's finished by any means, but. You get closer in age to uh, realizing that it could be the end of your career. You don't worry about pain and sorenesses as much as you did when you were younger. That's interesting because, and you know, I see your point, but you'd almost think the logic would be, well, you know, the guy's a little older. He can't quite throw as many pitches. If you're 22, you, you leave him out there, but they... The thinking is just the opposite. They protect the young pitchers and the old veterans. They say, I let it go. Uh, it'd be kind of nice if they just throw it out with all of them to make it easier on managers. Kyle Farnsworth will pitch the eighth inning for the Yankees. The 3 2. High fly ball, deep right center, giving Chase Chavez. Taking a zigzag route, and he hauls it in for the second out.
There's the uh, route Michael's talking about and catches it over his shoulder. Outfielders see the ball much better when they play it to the side. And El Duque appreciates it. Boy, he is into this game. And if you're a New York fan, you, you got to be happy for the way he's pitched tonight because he has pitched a lot of big games on this mound and not for the Mets, but for the Yankees. Damon is 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. You've seen that pitch a lot. Damon, Posada, and, you know, that's almost by design. El Duque, you know, slings that curveball in there at a lefty. It looks good, and the only thing they can do with it is pull it foul. Grounded to short. Reyes. And El Duque. Has thrown 109 pitches, and he works a 1-2-3 seventh inning. We take it to the eighth here at the stadium as the Yankees two and the Mets nothing. <laughs> that little fan that spells out Go Yankees as it goes around. Pretty cool. Time for the Mets in-game box score, sponsored by your Tri-State Lincoln and Mercury dealer. There's just one hit there. That's it, just one hit. That hit by Andy Chavez against Ron Ballone. There's been one walk, and the Yankee pitching has been great. The last time the Mets were held to one hit over the course of an entire game, June 16th of 2003, Dontrell Willis did it. And the last time a Yankee had a one-hitter, Ted Lilly, on April 27th, 2002 at Seattle. Bubba Crosby takes over in right field as the Yankees tighten up the defense, and Kyle Farnsworth takes over on the mound. A lot of strikeouts and a lot of base runners. I, I think probably more than anything, Kyle Farnsworth, yeah, he'd like to get the ball to Mo, would like to just have a clean inning. Seems like it's been quite a while since he's had a 1 2 3 inning. And there's a strike. There's no knock on the bullpen so far tonight. Three scoreless innings, allowing just one hit and one walk. Floyd in his first game off the DL. Fouled out to Posada. That's the 2F. And then he flied out to right. That's the F9 and the 5th. Floyd, 3 for 10 lifetime against Farnsworth. Al Duque is just looking for some runs. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And he's held the Yankees to just two runs over seven innings. Well, I know uh, if the Mets lose, he's not going to feel good about losing, but he's got to feel good, you know, coming off the last start where he didn't really have his stuff together and Willie Randolph had said, you know, he just hasn't had command of that fastball like he's like we've seen him in past times, but that was uh, vintage El Duque tonight. Seven innings, two runs, good enough to win most games. Actually, it looked like his stuff got better after the uh, rain delay. Curve was sharper. And the count one and two as Floyd swings over the slider. Right in on the hands and fouled the bat. There was some trepidation about calling up Floyd, and you see Dwaner Sanchez warning, because in his final bat yesterday for the Brooklyn Cyclones, he swung through three fastballs, so his timing wasn't quite there. But Willie Randolph said he was going to leave it up to Floyd. If Floyd felt that he was ready, then he would activate him. So from some Brooklyn to the Bronx, two and two. That one registered 99 on the radar gun. Grounded to short. Jeter. One away. With a scoreboard update, we throw it back to Bob Lorenz in our studios. Bob? All right, Michael, thank you. Top of the ninth in South Florida. Man aboard for David Ortiz. 
deep, long, and caught by Jeremy Armida at the wall. That's the final out. Marlins win it 5-2 over the Red Sox and end Boston's 12-game winning streak. Back to Michael now. Thank you, Bob. So if the Yankees can hold on, then they will cut the Red Sox lead to three, and the Red Sox winning streak had to end at some point. It finally ends at 12. Valentin swings and misses. Boy, Joe Girardi really has that team playing well. And the count one and one. With that victory, the Marlins are 35 and 41. Really is remarkable after that start. Mm -hmm. they were... I think since May 22nd, they have the best record in baseball. High pop up. First base side. Phillips is there. Two down. So two away for Farnsworth, and that'll bring up Julio Franco. Franco three for five lifetime against Farnsworth. Top of the eighth. Yankees two and the Mets nothing. Franco has struck out twice in this game, once against Messina, once against Valone. That should be a, a good matchup for Kyle if he can throw strikes. We've talked about how as great a hitter as Julio Franco has been over the years. Uh, you can imagine at his age, a little tough to catch up with that heater unless you really cheat and get the bat out front. They were teammates last year with the Atlanta Braves. Kyle picked up 16 saves for the Braves after coming over from Detroit. I used to throw this hard before you hurt your arm. Is there? I still does. Like you should have seen him yesterday <laughs> in the playground. <laughs> I've never felt this hard, Mike. You threw 98 when you got drafted. Grounded to short. And that'll do it. So a nice clean inning for Kyle Farnsworth, and he has been waiting for that. So El Duque knows that unless the Mets rally in the ninth inning, he's going to get a loss. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's 2 nothing Yanks. Time to take a look at the Yankees in-game box score, sponsored by your Tri-State Lincoln and Mercury dealer. The Yankees picked up seven hits against El Duque. Jeter won. Giambi, that home run. Posada had a double. Bernie Williams, two for three. Two singles, a stolen base, which resulted in Andy Phillips' RBI single. Malky Cabrera picked up a hit, and then Miguel Cairo was held hitless over three at-bats. So all of that adds up to two runs for the Yankees. The home run by Giambi, the RBI by Phillips, and they'll try to make that hold up, and they'll try to add to it right now. In the bottom of the eighth inning, they'll have to do it against a new Met pitcher, Juaner Sanchez. He has been a godsend for the Met bullpen, acquired in a trade from the Dodgers, and uh, Sanchez has been everything they could hope, 4-0, way less than a hit per inning, and a 2.74 ERA. He pitched one inning in Boston on the 27th. And on June 23rd, pitching in Toronto, he felt discomfort in his right shoulder. And it kind of emanated from the neck. And the Mets were very nervous. They sent him back to New York to get an MRI on his right arm. And it was really just a pinched nerve in the neck. Ron Guidry congratulating Farnsworth after a strong eighth. And there's a strike to Jeter. You know, he mentioned uh, Kyle's desire as any pitcher just to have one, two, three inning. Out of 36 innings, that was his ninth one, two, three inning. So, 
And it's been a while since so sometimes, you know, an inning like that, get a pitcher going in the right direction. Slice past the diving Franco and up against the tar. It's going to kick out to right field. Jeter will go to second. He'll get himself a leadoff double. Jeter's two for four. Took an El Duque fastball that way earlier in the game. And again, Derek seeing a lot of fastballs tonight. Takes him the other way, which he usually does. Nice effort by Franco. But that ball takes an unusual carom. And by the time uh, Chavez tracks it down, Derek has a double. Willie Randolph hoping his team could snap a three-game losing streak. Watching the Yankees threatening here in the eighth inning. Here's Giambi, he homered in the first, grounded to second with El Duque covering it first in the third, and then flied out to center in the fifth. Along with Jim Codd and Al Leiter, I'm Michael Kay, and you're watching Yankees baseball on the Yes Network. We thank you for joining us on this Friday evening, the beginning of a holiday weekend. Yankees leading the Mets 2-0 in the first game of the second phase of the Subway Series. That one's fouled away. You look at Jason's home run and RBI total, he's not quite up there in RBIs with David Ortiz, but he, he could really make a case for him being to the Yankees what Ortiz is to the Red Sox, because they don't always come late in the game, but he gets a lot of home runs at the, at the right time. The one in Wednesday's game tied it late. The one in today's game, first inning, gives him an early lead. One behind Ortiz in home runs and eight behind him in RBIs. Count one and two. He told you before the rain delay that uh, July 1st of last year, if you go one calendar year, he has 50 home runs and 127 ribbies. Over 147 games, so now it's 51 home runs and 128 rivers. Blew it right by him upstairs, and that's a big out for Sanchez because Cheetah does not move to third. Pretty good sequence. A breaking ball there, fouled off late. That's got good movement on it. And now this last one, perfect spot to a left-hand power hitter. Up and in with some movement, 96 miles an hour. Pits to A-Rod is a blistering fastball inside, 1-0. A-Rod fouled out to the catcher in the first. Fly to left in the fourth and fly to right in the sixth. Popped up. Castro behind the plate. And the goodwill lasted, oh, I don't know, two days. Hey, you have to keep it here after the last out for the Nissan postgame with Bob Lorenz, David Justice, and Kimberly Jones featuring detailed analysis of tonight's game, interviews with players, plus scores and highlights from around baseball. The Nissan postgame immediately following the game only on Yes. And here is Posada. Posada one for three. Jeter remains at second. He led off the inning with a double. And they're going to intentionally walk Posada and deal with Bubba Crosby. So Willie Randolph has seen enough of Posada get big hits over the years. He'd rather take his chances with Bubba Crosby. O 
over the last two games. That includes the 4-3 victory over the Braves on Wednesday. The Yankees are 1 for 17 with runners in scoring position. That only base hit was Andy Phillips' RBI single in the fourth inning. And the Yankees are 1 for 7 tonight in those situations. So an intentional walk for Posada, and that'll bring up Crosby for the first time tonight. He took over and right for Bernie Williams. While in there, Bernie Williams was two for three. Also scored a run and stole a base. You see what Bubba's has done this year, 245, spent a good chunk of time on the DL with a hamstring problem. First and second, two outs. And the count, 1-0. Two nothing Yankees looking for more. They have eight hits. The Mets have just one. Popped up. David Wright backpedals on the outfield grass. He'll put it away for the final out of the inning. So the Yankees waste the leadoff double by Jeter. No runs a hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We go to the ninth. Last licks coming up for the Mets, and they'll have to do it against Mariano Rivera. We've played eight full innings here at Yankee Stadium. Yankees 2-8-1, the Mets 0-1-0. Moe comes on, tries to hold the Mets down. Mariano Rivera will come in and try to close this down. And of course, he answered to the strains of Enter Sandman. One of the great entrances in sports as he jogs in from left center field. And look at what he jogs into. A crowd of 55,245, the 17th sellout of the year for the Yankees. Carries a glove in the right hand. Steady gait. And there is one and only Sandman, a reference to the fact that Mets closer Billy Wagner also comes in to the same song. You were on the bench, Al, for a few of those. You find yourself getting caught up in the uh, in the rhythm and the music when he comes in. That's uh, I can kind of make the hair stand up in the back of your neck sometime. You, there, there's one place in baseball that I, that it does that, and it's when uh, Hoffman comes in Hell's at the Bells. Hell's Bells at Qualcomm because it was closed in. It just mm -hmm. sounded the reverberation of it. Just that that you stop and and it was pretty cool. Well, the Mets have managed just one hit against four Yankee pitchers. Now Mariano Rivera will try to hold him down. Andy Chavez is the only Met with a hit tonight. A clean sixth inning single to left field against Ron Ballone. And Rivera deals. Andy Chavez has never faced Rivera, so no history there. Castro's 0 for 1 and Reyes 0 for 5. Delgado on the bench, but he has a pulled ribcage muscle, 7 for 19 against Rivera. Thought about bunting, but takes a strike. I was mentioning it to Al between innings. As many bats as Mo breaks, the left-hand hitters, I'm surprised more lefties uh, don't try to... It's pretty tough getting a base hit the other way. You'd think they might try to bunt. Popped up. Jeter. One away. I would think the win would go to Ron Vallone. He pitched two scoreless innings, and then in came Proctor in the seventh, and actually Scott Proctor had to do the heavy lifting, really. He worked through the two, three, four men when it was a two-nothing lead. Farnsworth with a clean inning. Mo gets to face the uh, the bottom part. And then the leadoff hitter. Here's Ramon Castro. He's 0 for 2, fly to right, and struck out. And there's a strike. Willie really doesn't have much of a bench. Nady's hurt, Delgado's hurt, but they're on the active list. He has Eli Marrero and Chris Woodward. The 0-1. 1-1. David Wright's had a rough night. 0 for 3, 3 strikeouts. Foul 
fouled away and down the right field side. And the count now one and two. Tries to go up the ladder and the count two and two. Strike three. Yankees went out of way. Now Moe's really become effective with that pitch. Most of the time you throw that cutter in the outside corner, but that time he throws it inside. You saw Castro give ground, and then it cuts just across the inside corner. I guess you'd call that a front door cutter. Here's Jose Reyes. 0 for 3. Runs the hands up the bunt, takes a pitch low. 1-0. Reyes is batting from the right side against Mariano Rivera, so he's trying to take the cutter away. And he chops it to short. Jeter, 360, fires, got him! And the Yankees win 2 to nothing. It's the fifth Yankee shutout of the season. It took five pitchers to do it, and five Yankee pitchers held the Mets to just one hit. And that one hit, Andy Chavez, a clean single to left field in the sixth. A pretty nifty play to finish it off. Jeter knows how fast Reyes is, so he's taken no time in making the pivot in the throw. And for the Mets, their first four-game losing streak of the season. And for the Yankees, a victory, coupled with the Red Sox loss to the Marlins. And the Yankees cut the Red Sox lead to three in the American League East. The home run for Jason Giambi. That was in the first inning. That's all the Yankees needed, as it turns out. And then an RBI single by Andy Phillips in the fourth. And they survive a hour and three-minute rain delay. That cost them Mike Messina, but the bullpen did its job beautifully. So a 2-0 Yankee victory over the Mets, and the guy that gave the Yankees the lead for good, Jason Giambi, joins our very own Bobby Mercer right in front of the Yankee dugout. Bobby? All right, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, the month of June, not a bad month for you, Jason. Uh, 11 home runs, and you have 24 on the year, and the home run that you hit tonight, that was the game winner. Yeah, you know, I'll take it. I don't I don't think I even had a career average against El Duque, so... Uh, you know, I got one I finally left over the plate for me, and, uh, you know, I was ready to hit it and didn't miss. And then after the night, you know, he was back tough again on me. I don't know how you feel about this, you know, with Matsui out of the lineup. You got Sheffield out of the lineup. Those are a lot of home runs. A-Rod the other day came up with the game winner. It was a home run. Do you two guys talk about how much pressure it really is and what the team is looking up to you guys to come up with these big hits? Well, definitely, we're the two big guys in the lineup. You know, Ajit does a great job of Johnny Damon getting on for us. And, uh, you know, like I've always said, I love having that responsibility, trying to be that guy in that spot to come up with the big hit. And we work well together, Alex, and I, me being a left-handed hitter and him being right-handed, you know, because you don't want to put it on somebody else, you know, especially with the two guys that have won some MVPs and gone on. So I enjoy being in it. And, you know, Alex got the big hit the other day, and he, he's just about to start to get hot. What can we look forward to in the month of July? I hope so. You know, I just keep it going. And, uh, you know, the work I've been doing with Donnie's been great. You know, we've stayed on that routine that we, we had last year. We've kept it. And, uh, I, you know, I feel great up there. Congratulations. Great win tonight. Thanks, bud. I appreciate All it. All right, buddy. All right, Michael, back up to you three amigos. All right. Thanks a lot, Bobby, and thanks to Jason as well. Since July 1st of last year, Jason Giambi now with 51 home runs over a period of 148 games. A lot of heroes in this one. When we come back, we try to break this down. We'll hand out the awards that you love so much and then a full postgame as well. Yankees win 2-0.